Good morning, and thank you for welcoming me here. Um, I've been here a few times uh, for a Presbytery meeting with Mission Presbytery, um, for the Habitat uh, for Humanity event y'all host every year. Um, I'm Katie Walters. I've been a pastor for almost 10 years. Um, have served kind of all over in Georgia, Atlanta area, um, in New Braunfels, Texas, and most recently, I was your neighbor at Forest Hills Presbyterian Church in Holotus, Texas. Um, I'm currently in a, a self-imposed sabbatical from ministry, and as I shared with Carl, it's kind of I have a robe and I will travel kind of season in my life. Um, I met Dan eight years ago. It feels really long ago. Um, when he was chairing the exams committee for Mission Presbytery. And we kind of had an eventful meeting because one of the questions we ask any pastors coming into Mission Presbytery is if you would ever, you know, what would make, would you ever leave the PCUSA? And if so, you know, would you take a church? Those of you who have been Presbyterian for a long time might understand why we ask that question with our history. Um, but I had never thought about that, and when they asked, when Dan asked me this question, I kind of paused, and I said, I don't think so, unless they made Satan Jesus, um, which no one had ever said before, and no one has ever said since. Um, I'm grateful to call Dan a colleague and a friend, and once in a while, a fount of wisdom, um, and he's, I'm grateful to be here for him today, and I'm grateful for your grace as I, if I stumble through things. Friends, I invite you to hear from Scripture two different passages. Our first passage comes from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. God's right hand and God's holy arm have given God victory. The Lord has made known God's victory. God has revealed God's vindication in the sight of the nations. God has remembered God's steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound and melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for God is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading, as you might have heard from earlier, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Beginning in verse 9, I invite you to hear what Jesus says to his friends gathered around him. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep, keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I choose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Friends, this too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was recently at a conference with a bunch of pastors. You know how fun we can be together. 
When my friend Archana named her native language as her heart language, and I fell in love instantly with that term, heart language. And I realized my heart language is music. I think in songs, I remember in songs, I passed Greek and Hebrew because I made up songs of all the words and definitions and prepositions and rules. I only know scripture because I've sung it, and it helped that I was a church choir nerd for many, many years, as well as sang in college. I hear music in just about everything. Right now, I'm driving my dad's minivan as I pack up my apartment, and it kind of has this weird little syncopated beat to it that my car doesn't have, and I kind of jam along as I drive. And lately, although I haven't been a morning person, I am becoming one because of my 10-month-old puppy. I love sitting outside in the cool dawn and hearing the symphony of birds. I think four years ago I would have been annoyed by them, but now I appreciate them. Psalm 98 then seems fitting as it calls the people to sing a new song of God. They're encouraged to tell of God's marvelous ways, to pick up a lyre or a trumpet or a horn and make a joyful noise. Now notice, it doesn't say make a perfect noise, just joyful. So even if you think you're not a musician or you're like my nephew who's in his first year of learning trombone, God doesn't care, for it is an offering to God. And then there's a call for creation to join the song, let the seas roar, let the world get involved, let the floods clap their hands, the hills sing together in joy, for God is coming. God is coming to be among God's own. So in true Pastor Katie fashion, two songs came to mind as I looked at our readings this morning. And I'll give fair warning, these songs are about as different as they can be. And one of them might be what I call an earworm. It's going to get stuck, and you're going to find yourself singing it as you go to the grocery store like we heard. And you won't help but smile when you're singing this song. In reading John's words, we hear Jesus reminding the disciples about what God has commanded them to do. And then he adds, and here's what I want you to do. This is my commandment. Cue the song. It has been recorded by so many different children's choruses, but I think the Veggie Tales version, complete with like a ska brass section, if you are of that generation, really encapsulates this song. It goes. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. And then you repeat that forever. <laughs> and then in case you didn't catch on, it goes, that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. And you repeat that forever. And then you go back to, this is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. I kind of wonder what would have happened if Jesus started saying these words and a talking tomato and tuba playing cucumber came out and added a little oomph to his words. It's a silly song, but so many years, decades later, I still remember it. And I know what Christ's commandment is, that we love one another. In preparing for this morning, though, I was reminded of another hymn that beautifully captures this message from Jesus. Episcopalian priest Arlette Buenois Joseph begins one reflection with these words, penned by Henry Francis Light while he battered tuberculosis. <clears throat> Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide, when other helpers fail and comforts flee, help us. 
chorus, oh, abide with me. What a thrilling prayer request for God to abide with us always, and even more so when the darkness deepens or other helpers fail. But it also begs of us, what does it mean for God to abide with us? The gospel reading from John reminds us that Jesus' words, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love. And so to abide in Christ's love means to abide in Jesus, because he himself is love. In the gospel, Jesus lays out these three benefits of abiding in him. First, to abide in Jesus means that the love of God is present in us. No ifs, ands, or buts. And as a result, we can love like Christ. Like most things, this is much harder than it sounds. Using Jesus as our model for love, many of us might feel like we come up short and miss the mark. Jesus loved unconditionally and without judgment and without the need for reprisal. I hate this word. Y'all know the word. (laughs) Normally, I write it out phonetically, and I was like, I'll get it this morning. I did not. Reciprocity. There it is. Verse 13 spells out what this means to love as Jesus. No one, no one has greater love than this to lay, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. If you've driven on this beautiful road, the highway one, anytime like mm, 7 to 9 a.m. or... 3.30 to 8 p.m., there's not a lot of love going on. People do not put others first. Reverend Buena Joseph, though, continues sharing a story of how this is lived out regarding Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and it comes from the book Parting the Waters, America in the King Years, and it's a story about what happened after King's front porch was bombed while his wife and 10-week-old baby were inside. King walked out to the front porch and holding up his hand for silence, he tried to still the anger by speaking with an exaggerated peacefulness in his voice. Everything was all right, he said. Don't get panicky. Don't do anything panicky. Don't get your weapons. If you have weapons, take them home. He who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. Remember, that is what Jesus said, we want to love our enemies. I want you to love our enemies. Be good to them. This is what we must live by. We must meet hate with love. I know Dr. King might feel like a pedestal, but what an opportunity for us to try and live with love. Benoit Joseph continues making the declaration that abiding in Jesus and loving like Jesus creates a byproduct of joy. You can't help but smile or be joyful when you abide with Jesus. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And I have said these things so that there might be joy in you and that your joy may be complete. Later in Abide With Me, Light mentions the dimming of earth's joys. He says, swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. Y'all, I don't have to spend time talking about how the world is not the most joyful place. There are things that keep us from living into God's love. There are news stories that have us weeping. There are the isms of the world that keep us and others from becoming and living into our best self. And yet, God remains. Christ's love remains. So even in the midst of hurt and decay, as the poet names it, We hold on with hope to joy. 
Finally, Jesus tells us that to abide in him, that we are anointed to bear fruit that will last. And let's be honest, Presbyterians, we're not real big fans of anointing. It makes us a little uncomfortable thinking someone might touch us with oil. But we have been anointed. We have been anointed with a purpose, with a calling. I see that lived out in your church with your mental health matters, with your willingness to create a caregiving respite ministry. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I changed it, and I said, I choose you, because daily God chooses us again and again, no matter what we do. And Jesus says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, and bear fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. And let's be honest, some days we're going to feel like a great fresh mango that you take a bite out of and it's juicy and tart and sour and perfect. And other days we might feel like a raisin, dried up with nothing to give. But yet both are fruit and both are offerings to this world. Friends, you know this to be true. I'm just reminding you. When we abide in Jesus, when we make the claim that Christ has a home in our heart, we are choosing love. We are choosing light in the midst of darkness. We are choosing joy even in the midst of despair. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Y'all will be in my love. Abiding with Jesus is exemplifying the love that God and Jesus share with each other and that we as a community are invited to participate in. If we're like the poet Light who penned those words so many years ago, and we acknowledge our helpless state and beseech Christ to abide with us, to beseech him to teach us to love like him, we can go out joyfully singing in confidence. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. May it be so. Amen.